this video we're going to go ahead and take a look at creating one more method. This one's going to be a little bit different though. What I want to do is, I've been creating methods so far that have had the word void in it, meaning that it's not going to return something back to be used for some kind of calculation. What I want to do now is I want to change this up. and I'm going to create a method that will actually allow us to return something back. So you guys can see how to return something back on our methods. So what I'll do is I'm going to go ahead and space some spaces there down for my class and give myself to work with here to create myself a new method. So let's go ahead and call this one uh, private. We'll start off with private. And instead of void, what I need to type in here now is what kind of data type is going to be returned. And of course we've got strings, we've got doubles, integers, um, chars, we've got all kinds of different things that we can go ahead and return back um, as a data type. I'm going to go ahead and use a double this time. And I need to give it a name. So we're going to go ahead and say convert to yards. And then we're going to go ahead and say it's going to take a parameter as well. So let's go ahead and say int. And we'll, we'll type in int input inches. And as you'll notice, while I'm typing it in, there was no IntelliSense that told me that variable already existed. And that's because it was in this method and this is a brand new method. So the scope of it's letting me know that I, I can actually create it so I understand the scope. Let's go ahead and hit enter, opening curly brace and ending curly brace. And so now we've got our method created. Let's go ahead and write some code for it. And as you'll notice, I've got a red squiggly line. So if I hover over it, you're gonna see that it tells me there's a problem because not all paths return a value. What it's telling me is that in my block of code here, nothing's been returned yet and so uh, it's let, get it, letting me know that because I told it it was going to return back to me a double value uh, data type and so we'll write our code and you'll see when I finally end this block of code and use the keyword return it will go away and uh, so just leave this with the red squiggly line for now but as we go through what I need to do now is I need to create another integer and let's go ahead and do this one as yards and we're going to set it equal to the int input inches. And what I'll need to do is, since there are 36 inches in a yard, I'll need to divide this by 36. And so now what I'll do, and we'll do this real quick and simple so you guys can see how this works, is I'm going to go ahead and return back the value. So basically what it's going to do is whenever I call this method, it's actually going to hold a value for me that I can use for a calculation. So I'm just going to say return. And what do I need to return? Well, I need to return back this calculation here called yards. And you can see, wait a minute, I've got a problem. I said int yards was an integer. And this is telling me that I need to return back a double. So what I should probably do is I should make them so that they're the same data type. Because when I return it back, let's say yards, it's going to want it to be the same data type. And since this is both numbers, it's going to allow me to do this here at the moment. But proper coding would, would say, go ahead and make them the same data type. So I'll just start this off with a double here. All right. And so let's go ahead and run our application, or call our application first. So this will run. So I'm just going to go ahead and type in convert two yards, tell it to pass in the inches variable that we have up here to be used as the parameter, and I'll go ahead and return to us back the answer for yards. And if I run my application, we'll go ahead and type in, let's say, 65, hit calculate. It gave us back our 5 foot 5 inches, which was from the previous video. It did the calculation for feet to inches, but I see nothing here on yards. So something still needs to be done. So I'll click finish here. And what I want to do now is I want to look at my code and figure out what's going on. I just told you that it would return back a value. However, we never told it what to do with the value when it returned it. So what I want to do now is I'm just going to do a quick LST output dot items dot add and then I want to go ahead and put that all in parentheses I need to add that to my list boxes so what's going to happen when I run this it's going to call my convert to feet uh, and then it's going to run its calculation and then it's going to go ahead and say list in my list box or add to my list box 
this, which is going to be the whole convert, there we go, convert to yards with the inches being passed into it. So this is going to return back a value and that value will now be added to my list box. So if I run this, and I go ahead and type in 65, calculate, you'll see that it says 5 foot 5 inches and return back 1. Let's go a little larger than 65, let's go to 298. You'll see that it's 20 feet 24 feet 10 inches and it's 8 yards. Now it does have some change with this or some extra inches and feet that go with this. However, all I wanted to do at the moment was add to it the number to demonstrate how to return back a value. So if I wanted to, just to dress it up a little bit, let's go ahead and stop the debugging. I could just basically say add to it YDS, which is short for yards. And if I reran this, it would now have the word yards after it. So if I typed in something like 587 or 78, calculate, you'll see that's 48 feet 2 inches. It's also 16 yards, but there is some more inches and feet that need to go with this. So it's returning back a value that I can use within my calculation. All right, so I wanted to work with converting these to both yards, feet, and inches, or to all three. And so what I've got now is I have doubles here. If I want to change the data type, just to let you know, I can go ahead and type in int, and I could use int here as well. And there we go. And so now I've just changed the data type to an integer rather than a double that's being returned. And it's as easy as that, just making sure that you have the right data type here as well as the data type that's being returned, this yards is an integer that's being returned to an integer here. So this can be very confusing. I know there's a lot of data, or there's a lot of knowledge that has to come into uh, understanding how the methods all work. Just to recap, private lets us know that it's within our class, it can be used. Int is gonna be letting us know it's gonna return an integer as opposed to void, which returns nothing back to be used as a value. Int is gonna return an integer that's gonna be used as a value within my code. And then this is the name of my method, and then I've told it to use a parameter that I just created called int input inches. And that's going to be an integer that we're going to work with. So, now let's move on and ask a question. What if I wanted to return back more than one value? Well, I can only use one return. And so I need to return something back that can hold more than one value. And if you watch the videos, you'll notice that we've got something, or you should know that we've got something called an array. I can return back an array. And so what I can do here for this is instead of just saying private int or whatever data type I want, I can say I'm returning back an array by putting in the square brackets. Now what I need to do is I actually need to create an array to return back. So what I'll do for this is I'm just going to take away the word yards. And let's go ahead and finish our calculations for the other two objects or other two calculations that I need to have. I'm going to do int feet and I also need to do int inches that'll be for my remainders so those are the three calculations that I need or the three figures that I need to work with I'm gonna go ahead and say the feet is gonna equal now for the feet what I need to do is once I've divided out my yards then I need to figure out how many inches are left for feet so what I'll do for this calculation is I'll use int input inches and I'll go ahead and use the remainder after we divide it by 36 and then divide that by 12 and if you're not too keen on this math it'll give me the right answer just giving me the remainder of the 36 divided by 12 so we'll go ahead and use that one that's okay come over here to our inches and what I want to do is if I take the int input inches and give myself the remainder of it divided by 12 That'll give me how many ever inches I have left over that's not part of a calculation that I have for feet or for yards. And so this will give me my three values, yards, feet, and inches. I want to return all three of those. So what I'll do is I'll just create myself an array, int, and we'll go ahead and use the square brackets for the array, and I need to give it an answer. So I'm going to go ahead and call this one int answer. I'm going to go ahead and say it's equal to a new int 
And how many values do I want? Let's see, one, two, three. So we'll call, we'll say we need three values for the array. Let's go ahead and set those three values. First value is going to be yards. The second value of my array, I'll use feet. And the last value of my array, I'll use inches. I use the curly brace there to close that. So I've gone ahead and created myself my array. Now what I need to return back, because it's going to be looking for an integer array, I'm going to go ahead and return back my empty answer. Alright, so now I've just found a way to return back more than one value by using an array. So let's go back up here to our code for the calculate click method. And what I've got here is I told it to go to ahead and list my convert to yards inches. Now what I need to do is since I'm returning back an array, I need to tell it what spot of the array that I'm returning back that I want to use. And we know that the first spot is going to be zero. So I'll go ahead and add that there. So right off the bat we're going to say we're going to use the value at the zero spot or zero element of my array for this one. And now what I need to do is continue this on, and this is going to get a little long here on my code, I need to continue this on for both the feet and the inches. So I'm going to go ahead and say convert to yards, and we'll go ahead and say the inches is going to be passed in, and I want spot 1. And I had to go ahead and add the label to this of feet. I'll go ahead now and say the inches. I want to convert two yards. I'm going to pass in the inches variable as a parameter. And then I want to use spot two of my element and add to it inches. Alright, so that's what the code is going to look like. First use the zero spot or zero element, then the one, and then the two. So those are all three of my pieces of information that are coming out of my method. So if I run it, so I've got build error. So let's find out. Oh, looks like I'm missing a parenthesis. Yep, I'm missing the parenthesis right there. There we go. Now let's go ahead and run it again. And I'll enter in the number of inches, let's just say 867, calculate, it's 72 feet 3 inches, or it's 24 yards, 0 feet 3 inches. So let's go ahead and try a different number, let's try something smaller, like 67. It's 5 feet 7 inches, or it's 1 yard 2 feet 7 inches. And so this is, allows us to use our calculator. Now I went a little over and beyond um, with this particular method. I did not necessarily need to create a method to return three values, but I wanted to do this. I could have done it similar to what we did for convert to feet, but I wanted to do a method that actually returned back more than one value, as well as showing us how to return back a value. So this concludes the video on creating a method that returns back a value that I can use once I call the method to run.